Grand Teton, Yellowstone, and Glacier are three of the most popular national parks in North America. For many of us, traveling to all three on a single trip is a bucket list adventure. We've visited all three of them at different times over the years, and we know which spots stick out in our memories and leave us wanting to come back. So if these national parks are on your list of places to visit, we've got you covered in creating an unforgettable adventure. Listen, Glacier is amazing. The hikes are stunning. The views are out of this world, but there's also an adorable town called Whitefish. We've arranged your trip starting from the south in the Grand Tetons, where you can see jagged peaks reflected in crystal clear mountain lakes. From there, we'll visit the dazzling geothermal wonders of Yellowstone, where you're almost guaranteed to see buffalo, well, bison, Rome, and finally, we'll work our way north to the rugged beauty of Glacier, where grizzly bears still wander through the cedar forests and where you can see glaciers. Well, this is a pretty killer park. Yeah. I think a lot of people are here to take in the Tetons. You might be we checking something off our list. Seeing a bear? Yes, he said there's a couple bear jams up ahead. These national parks contain some of the most majestic landscapes in all of the continent. If you're looking for the perfect 10-day itinerary through the American West, this is a strong contender. So lace up your hiking boots, grab a camera, and let's hit the road. Oh yeah, because there's a guy with a... Look at him, look at him. The dogs are working. My goodness, this is fantastic. <laughs> Let's kick things off in Grand Teton National Park with a suggested itinerary for days one through three. Grand Teton officially became a national park in 1929, making it the 20th national park in the United States. And it's not just the park that's younger than Yellowstone. At 10 million years old, the Tetons are one of the youngest mountain ranges in North America. This park is the perfect place to see animals that are usually hard to find, like moose, black bears, and even grizzlies. grizzlies. Those are grizzly bears, my friends. Yes, those are grizzly bears. When I put down, see a bear, I had no idea there would be two, they would be grizzlies and we would be like the second person in line at the stop. Like they've stopped traffic, so we have a front row seat. <laughs> this is amazing. It doesn't get much better. It does not, it is amazing. Grand Teton is a paddler's paradise with gorgeous mountain lakes that reflect the jagged peaks of the Tetons above. Jenny Lake is the most popular, but there are a lot of choices for time on the water. And if you go early or late enough, you have a good chance of having the water all to yourself even during the summer peak. Day one, arrive and set up camp. If you're lucky enough to score a dry camping site in the park, Grand Teton has several off-grid options that offer stunning views and incredible access. We typically use Campendium to find good off-grid camping but if you can't get a campsite in the park, don't worry. Jackson, Wyoming and Driggs, Idaho both offer nearby RV parks with full hookups and a taste of Western life. One of our favorite national park campgrounds is Coulter Bay. All right, there you I go. I have a pull through. Yay! Wow. I got to see two bears and I have a pull through. <laughs> <laughs> Things are good. Things are looking up. Located right off Jackson Lake and inside the park, it's big rig friendly with 338 individual sites. But if you want to stay here, you'll need to book in advance or pick up a cancellation like we did. In the afternoon, you can drive some or all of the 42 mile Teton Park Road for some incredible views. Pull out at the scenic overlooks for views of the park. You won't have a hard time finding the sunset and we imagine you'll be compelled to cook outside and enjoy a campfire. 
Don't people. still make good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I feel like I've heard that from somebody. <laughs> Where well, was that? That's Where what happens that? when you eat elk poop. <laughs> Day two, watch the sunrise at Oxbow Bend, Mormon Row, or Schwabacher Landing. They're all breathtaking, so don't worry too much about which you choose. You really can't go wrong. At Mormon Row, you can capture iconic photos of old farmhouses with the Tetons in the background. While Oxbow Bend and Schwabacher Landing are all about the lighting on the water. You have a couple of options and how to spend the rest of your day. If you're into hiking, there are endless options, and we use the app All Trails to find good hikes nearby. There are hikes at every level, but if you're an adventurous hiker, check out Cascade Canyon, a 10-mile path that ascends into the Tetons. You may also like Phelps Lake down to Jump Rock, but you should know that the hike out is not as easy and it can get hot. This hike is exhausting. For a cooler option, you can paddle Jenny Lake, or even rent a motorboat at Jackson Lake. No trip to Grand Teton is complete without a stop in the town of Jackson. This small town offers an accessible blend of upscale chic and Western cowboy. With lots of foodie options too, you can grab a bite and eat and wander the streets to get a good look at the antler archways or visit the National Museum of Wildlife Art. Day three, it's time to relocate to Yellowstone. But don't worry, it won't take long as it's only 31 miles away. If you're staying outside the park, set up camp at West Yellowstone or Gardner, Montana. Yellowstone is a massive park. So if you're camping in a van or something small, you might wanna change campsites every night to maximize your time. Wherever you stay, get ready for long drive days because you're gonna to wanna to see it all. Pro tip, if you're in a van, you might be able to stop at Old Faithful and Midway Geyser Basin on your way up to Yellowstone, saving time later in the itinerary for a hike, bike, or park operated tour. We took the photography tour and had a blast. Even bigger RVs can stop at Old Faithful, which has an oversized parking area. We are here at Yellowstone to look at the black hand sand, what's it called? The oldest, largest, and one of our most beautiful vacation lands is Yellowstone National Park. Days four through six in Yellowstone National Park. When we say that Yellowstone is huge, we're not kidding. It's the second largest U.S. national park outside of Alaska. And in case you're curious, the largest is Death Valley. With over 2 million acres, five entrances, and 250 plus miles of roads, Yellowstone is a big place to explore in just a few days. And the long drive days can get even longer when herds of bison cram the roadways. Though the up-close experience is so unique, you probably won't mind. At least not the first time. With three days in Yellowstone, here are our top picks for the sights and experiences that will give you the best taste of what the park has to offer. Day four, kick it off with a Yellowstone classic by watching an eruption of Old Faithful. The historic Old Faithful Inn is worth a stop while you're here. Built in 1904, it's now a National Historic Landmark. Don't miss the walking trails nearby, which give you close-up views of bubbling geothermal pools. When the sun is higher in the sky, head to the vibrant technicolor display of the Grand Prismatic Spring. A boardwalk takes you all around the spring, or you can hike the Fairy Falls Trail to the Grand Prismatic Overlook for a bird's eye view. We enjoyed the walk to Lone Star Geyser, which erupts roughly every three hours. Every three hours? Yeah. And we came here and it was going. Yeah, eruptions occur in three hour cycles. This would also make a great bike ride. Bring lawn chairs if you wanna kick up your feet while you're waiting for the geyser to erupt. There are many spectacular waterfalls in Yellowstone. Our photography tour took us to the upper and lower Yellowstone River Falls. Day five is another early start so you can get to Lamar Valley before dawn for your best chance to see wolves. They may be along the main road or near the creek. Just watch where the tour vans are going. 
Even if you don't see the wolves, Lamar Valley is a great place to see bears, bison, bighorn sheep, and just about any other animal on your wildlife bingo card. For a list of all the campgrounds inside the Tetons, Yellowstone, and Glacier, visit keepyourdaydream.com slash big three. And that's three with the number. And if you enjoy this kind of content and find it helpful when planning your trips, let us know through the like button. If we get over 10,000 likes, we'll start planning the next region. Just leave a comment and where you'd like to go next. Day six, spend the morning at Mammoth Hot Springs. And I wanna take a bubble bath. In there? Yeah. And then drive over to Gardner and see Roosevelt Arch. Constructed in 1903 to mark the main entrance into the park at the time. Then head over to Norris Geyser Basin, one of the park's hottest, oldest, and least predictable areas. But watch your step. Most of the water here is above the boiling point. Feel the warmness of that. Wow. Whoa. That is really cool. days seven through 10 at Glacier National Park. While Yellowstone is vast and unique with wide plains and bubbling geothermal pools, Glacier has a different kind of magic. It showcases the melting of glaciers, alpine meadows, and ice blue mountain lakes. With over 700 miles of trails, hikers, backpackers, and climbers could explore this park for months on end. If you're looking to just relax, Glacier has you covered too with historic lodges and stunning drives, especially going to the Sun Road. All right, not a bad spot. So what do you think, is it, is it living up to your expectations? It's pretty cool. Day seven, make the drive north to Glacier. This drive will take you most of the day, so settle in and enjoy the journey. If you're looking for a good place to stretch your legs and have lunch, Butte, Montana is a convenient halfway point with some fun things to see and do. There are plenty of RV parks outside the park in Kalispell and Whitefish, but the two most popular RV parks include West Glacier RV Park, that also has small cabins if you have a family visiting, and the KOA, which is set up just five minutes down the road. Both of these RV parks are directly outside the park entrance. We have found ourselves in a predicament. <laughs> we were in that line and this line opened up and I'm like, I'm gonna go over there. And so I bolt over there and I look up and it says low clearance, six, six. Oh boy. I don't know if Do we're you six, want me to six. Get out? Moment of truth. Oh. Go right here, Trish, look right here. Right oh my here. gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> if you're looking for an easy hike close to the entrance, just to warm up your legs and get a taste for the amazing beauty Glacier has to offer, you might enjoy Upper McDonald Creek Trail. You might even get to see a little wildlife because it's so abundant in Glacier. Day eight, leave early, of course, for the scenic drive along going to the Sun Road. We cannot stress this enough. Get there early or parking will be a problem. The drive from West Glacier to Logan Pass offers the best views, but you can go all the way to Mini Glacier to see the east side of the park. If you'd rather get outside your vehicle to explore, you can stop at Logan Pass, and if you're lucky enough to find a parking spot, you can hike to Hidden Lake Overlook. All of these hikes are included on all trails, with the distance, elevation gain, and if it's dog friendly or not. Uh-oh, is he already boycotting? <laughs> Did he lie down? When he first started, and he was like running, and he was so eager, I was like, you know, maybe I, you know, I underestimated him. Maybe he's a hiker now. <laughs> no. Charlie. Okay. <laughs> we're going this way, guys. I'm not gonna we're look at you. That, we're making that I'm not gonna look at you. Day nine. Today's activities are yours to choose based on what you like doing. Glacier is less about destinations and more about experiencing nature in this beautiful part of the world. Whatever your speed, Glacier has options to satisfy everyone. Here are a few ideas. Hike Grinnell Glacier or Avalanche Lake. Spend a day on the water at Lake McDonald. Cycle going to the Sun Road, not for the faint of heart, or 
McDonald Creek Bike Path, good for all ages and abilities. Cap off the day at Glacier Park Lodge, built in 1912, or Lake McDonald Lodge, built in 1913, to soak up the abundance of some of the park's most historical landmarks. Day 10, pack up for the trip home, or continue your explorations in the area. There are plenty of great spots to explore nearby, like Bozeman, Montana, or Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. You can even venture into Canada if you're up for a border crossing. If I ever need to get the truth out of Trish, I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring a border agent and like uh, the citrus police. You guys have any citrus, any oranges, anything like that? We have blueberries. <laughs> Our national parks truly are America's best idea. The Tetons, Yellowstone, and Glacier will live in your memory forever. It doesn't matter how much time you have, just a few days or all summer. When it comes to this summer, do what you can with what you have and you'll make unforgettable memories that you'll cherish forever. If you'd like to continue the road trip to national parks in the Northwest, watch our Olympic and North Cascades episodes next. Don't wanna play games up with the moves. Don't wanna meditate, girl, but you it's hard. But you park. <laughs> I know, I know. Fill in the text me back, throw me a kiss instead of the tricks. Wow, look at that trail. It's something else, isn't it? We met so many great people today. Yes. One awesome camping story after the next. Yeah. I only have 15 moves to do all this. <laughs> You funny boy.